Namaskaram, everyone. It's been a long time I made a video. A few months back, I started a yatra to explore the trail of Sadhguru Sri Rama. With me, I had a fellow meditator. For some reason, I could not make any videos sharing the experience. Neither the fellow meditator or the fellow Yatri who was traveling with me got the chance to make the video. For some reason, now I'm making this video. There was a time before I knew the significance of Sadhguru, the significance of what Isha has to offer. Priyasa time. I was in a yatra. I visited all the major Shiva temples in the South India. Ramana Maharshi Ashram and even the Isha Center also. Two years prior to my initiation. And apart from that one, I climbed Vilangiri, Arunachala, Kumara Parvata, and so on. Now, why this yatra again? Because the person or the being who was in that yatra is not the same as I am now. I'm just making this video not to share my experiences or anything, but to demonstrate a living proof that Isha Yoga works, which means Sadhguru works. I'm just one of many, 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 many uncountable flowers in his garden. But at the same time, why this yatra? Because for me, if you ask me, for me, there's no need to travel anywhere. I can have explosive experiences at will. But why this yatra? Because after my, between the Samyama and Samyama Sadhana in 2019, I also made the Kailash Yatra also. But whatever yatra you make, there are many significant aspects of it. I do not know whether many of you are interested to what I have to say. Or might be relevant to you or any of our people. That's why this channel is called Hardcore Spirituality. Because it's not for everyone, but if you're watching it, I bow down to you because you are very few once you transcend the limitations of who you are, at least in the experience. Now the reason why I was making the Yatra is because there was like a series of chains of events that late to here, 
one other thing is the shapes of movement I will not go into that aspect but what I have found out is without inner transformation whatever significant thing you make them realize or give it there to them whether it has to do with the mundane or the survival or the transcendence it rarely works for them and it is not possible either physically logistically or karmic aspect of it for everyone to do all the yatras but we have to recognize that all these tirthas or the energy spaces whether it is swambhu self-created ones or consecrated by the yogis intentionally unintentionally consciously unconsciously whatever reason it's not possible for everyone to make that yatra to these tirthas and even those who are living next to them they do not know the significance of that and that occurred with me when I compare the Ramana Maharshi Ashram with the Sadhguru Sri Brahma Ashram at Trichy I'm not comparing in terms of the possibilities that is available over there, but how the Ramana Maharshi Ashram has been managed and without those devotees who managed or spread about Ramana Maharshi Ashram, I would not be here speaking In the same way, the significance of the Sadhguru Sri Brahma Ashrams. When I went there, I could barely see a few people. I'm not questioning the how it is managed or something, but when such a possibility is there, It is not made proper use of it. And coming back, uh, since the Tirthas, whether they were Swambhus or, like I mentioned, consecrated, they brought the possibilities to many places. And there is something working in foreground because for me, my being is already there in all the theaters already. I can experience that. I just need to carry this body there. I just need to carry the body there. I can experience all these places here, right here. It's not necessary for me to travel, but this yatra is necessary because these energy spaces, these enlightened beings, these people who have transcended the limitation of time and space, they have either been forgotten, either their significance has been slowly faded with history or they have merely become a place of worship 
these are the beings who brought the Kailash or the Kashi to everywhere they have come. Even now, while I'm speaking, I'm not speaking through my memories. So it's a small attempt, but from my point of view, it's the yatra I've never made before. Although it was planned to become a few days, it has been stretched to the itinerary of one week and then now to two weeks, and it's open ended, which means. I do not know how long it is going to last. It is going to cover nine Jyotilingas spread across, I think, five to six states or even more. Going through the Samadhis, Maha Samadhis, Jal Samadhis, Bhu Samadhis, and Vayu Samadhis of different masters and beings. It was completely wrong of people who address that Buddha is no longer there, Shiva is no longer there, that all these enlightened beings are no longer there. But if you ask me, <laughs> our ancestors are gone. Our friends, families of the past has gone. They've taken new bodies. But these beings, they have dropped their bodies, but they're still there. And few of them, of course, are still walking among us. You just need to be able to access them. If you're not able to access them, these yatras will crack open because the yatra that we are about to make is a cocktail of Eastern mysticism.